We're right here at the Dickies right now on Central Expressway and, and Knox Street, and we've been here since 1941. This store started, it was a closed up nightclub. My dad leased it, couldn't afford to buy it, in 1941 and put in this, about half of this space, the building was smaller then, he put in, we didn't have tables chairs, we had these school chairs, I call them, and he began to make barbecue here because he knew how to do that, and that's how we started. We had beef and ham sandwiches, potato chips, beer, and soft drinks. Later on, he put in french fries, and then later on, we put in sausage. So at the time of his death in 1967, we only had beef, ham, and sausage sandwiches, and no plates, and uh, uh, had french fries. That was the only vegetable we had, unless you want to count potato chips and fritos. So now, we still cook our meat the same way. We hook it all night over a hickory log, just like we did then. We cook the exact same recipe, and uh, that's, that's how, we, you know, how we've evolved, if you want to call it evolution since 1941, 81 years. It was amazing being a kid within Dickies. Like my dad, every weekend he would take me to work. I don't think there was many child labor laws back then, so he'd put me to work, so I'd do it. And so it was kind of awesome though. I'd walk around kind of like the little Napoleon, you know, thinking I was in charge. I wasn't really, but I thought I was. And so summer's there. It's kind of like our version of summer camp and the Dickie family. That was the growing up, and it was like the greatest thing in the world. My dad coming home from work every day, and he would have the barbecue smell on him, and it was just like so awesome. And I knew not only was he slicing brisket and slicing ribs, but he was also wheeling and dealing with banking and finance and all those things. And so, uh, but it was it was pretty awesome. My brother and I, we opened a store in Richardson, and we weren't doing any, any business there in Richardson like we needed. So I started the catering business. You know, my dad started the catering business in 1969. He had no, he has a story about it. He got an old broke down milk truck and grew it into a huge business. And so, you know, my grandfather, now he, he didn't do catering. He was just kind of the original, like, Texas pit master. But he just wanted to focus on inside the four walls. And so my dad came along and got the catering business. Once he really got that catering business going, we were catering for celebrities and politicians and really growing that thing. The real growth of Dickies is subject to my son and my daughter-in-law, not me. Yeah, I may have laid some of the foundation for it to start it, but they, they came in and took it and, and exponentially made it huge. That's, so they're the ones that should, get, should get the credit for the growth of Dickies, not me. You know, there's a lot that I love that I have gotten to be a part of with this brand, and I did marry into it. Um, I get that question a lot. I actually married Roland. I had a whole other life and marketing and technology and strategic planning, but I was drafted into service, and then I missed a couple of meetings, and I ended up CEO. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I've loved getting to be a part of is as the brand has expanded, as we've grown, you know, I never thought that I would end up working with my husband, much less my father-in-law. I also never thought that I would end up smelling like hickory wood every day. That was not my goal as a little girl, but uh, you know, that's sometimes how life works out and, and that's, you know, where I am and what we do and it's, you know, not a bad way to make a living. My dad didn't have a lot of money in the bank. He was making a living, not a, not a lot of money, but making a living. And he had $5,000 life insurance policy. Well, it took us $3,500 to bury him. So I knew I was going to work. <laughs> and I had to, to go to work for to support my mom. So to run to do that, I knew I had to run this place. I had to build another one or two to support me. So I knew I was being dra drafted into the barbecue business. Sometimes, you know, events happen and change what your life trajectory had was thought it would be. Well, that's what happened to me. I might have wanted to become a lawyer or televangelist or something, or something good like that, but instead I ended up in the barbecue business. I love that our brand is barbecue. I love that it makes guests happy. You know, barbecue is a great business, and I love both the barbecue and the business, but what I really love is that people are passionate about this. We're passionate about it. Barbecue is a passionate food. It's owned by me and my wife and my two sons, Roland Jr. and Cullen Dickey. There's no outside ownership. No people trying to uh, own a quarter or a part of the business. There's no, we're not going public, we're not selling the company. So it's the same family that it always has been since 1941. Being the CEO, you know, in some ways it is no different than what I have always done. I just have quite a few more responsibilities and things to sign at the end of the day. Uh, this, it, this is a family business in the sense that we grow organically. We really have looked at the business and make decisions to ensure our legacy, protect our guests, provide for our partners. It's food and folks. So many people told us we couldn't. Okay, and so there's your, there's your instant motivator right now. You can't do this. And so I love that. Thank you for saying that to us. And so a lot of, lot, lot of restrictions on us, they said. Okay, so we said, no, no, no. First, we're gonna, we're gonna take the state of Texas 
Texas, and then we're gonna go across the country, and then we're gonna go across the world, and that's what we've done. Mr. Dickey, my father-in-law, he wanted to have a, a cup that he thought, you know what, let's have people bring it back, and that'll be just a great way to have value. So we have these cups made, and they show up, and he opens the box, and he was very excited about it, and they're accidentally yellow. And they were not supposed to be yellow, it was a printing mistake, and he thought, well, you know what? Let's go with it, let's make this work. And so ever since then, we have had this iconic big yellow cup that you can spot a mile away. It's one of my favorite things when folks send in pictures on Instagram or they share stories and they will have a big yellow cup made out of Christmas trees. Or I love it when people send vacation photos where they've taken their big yellow cup. I mean, the big yellow cup has been more cool places than I have and the pictures are great. I love the give back that this brand has. And so the Dickey Foundation is something that, again, kind of organically formed where we have always given back. We've always had a belief that you have to support the communities in which you do business. Your guests want to come in and feel good about the dollar they're spending in your restaurant. They have so many choices. So we have always given back uh, to donate to the, to the communities but we formalized that. So my mother-in-law, Maureen Dickey, she wanted to make sure that we could have the legacy of Dickey's and that give back. So she started the Dickey Foundation and it supports first responders. So whether that is police officers, firefighters, uh, emergency medical personnel, all of the frontline folks that, that serve us every day, it is our way to support them. One of my favorite things that the Dickey Foundation does is to provide uh, body armor for police officers to see that we have great wonderful officers that are taking care of our community, but they don't always have the budget for the protection that they need to do their job. So one of the big foundation gifts that we do is to go in and give angel armor to police officers. And so I have loved that, being a part of that for the brand. I've loved that there's a portion of the sales that go to the Dickey Foundation for every big yellow cup that is out there. And we also do local community projects for first responders. So everywhere we have a Dickey's, we invite folks in the community to let us know what they need. So I love that extension, kind of a barbecue and the Dickey family and the give back. And that's, that's really what the Dickey Foundation is. We're third generation, we're family owned. We still have so many customers that come in that have been coming here for their second and third generation as well. They have great stories. We have second generation team members. Randy Hubbard um, is still with us. And we wanted a, a book to celebrate not only the barbecue, but what you eat when you're not eating barbecue. And so it is the story of all the pit masters, all the folks that really make Dickies Dickies. And it was a way to say thank you to our guests and kind of share a little bit of that behind the pit magic and what makes Dickies Dickies. Mom and dad would be very uh, surprised of the growth of this company. They wouldn't, they couldn't make the jump from the, the small place that we had to, to where it is now. It, it, it would be hard to do, you know. But anyway, that, that's, uh, but, but they'd be very proud. Thank you.